Hi, welcome to Take 5, a daily Bible time study in the New Testament by chapters. Today is April 27th and we're in John 18. The cup which the Father has given me, shall I not drink it? John 18, verse 11. Following the prayer time that Christ spoke in the presence of his apostles, we know that three of them, Peter, James, and John, continued with him into that which we call the Garden of Gethsemane for his time of final prayer. Following that prayer time is when Judas came, bringing soldiers with him in order to betray Christ by disclosing his location so that our Lord could be arrested. When the Roman cohort approached Christ, Jesus asked a simple question, Who do you seek? Whom do you seek? With their response of Jesus the Nazarene, Christ responds, I am he. God's name in Hebrew is Yahweh, which translates, I am. Here Christ says, I am, and with his indeed being the glorious I am, at his speaking of these words, every soldier backed up and fell to the ground in reverence of Jesus. Scripture teaches that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And here, overwhelmed by the power of God, these soldiers fall before him due to his glory. And there, standing with this cohort, watching all this play out is Judas. One wonders what passes through his mind when all these soldiers fall down around him, and he is left standing in his disbelief and betraying spirit. All four Gospels account, uh, account speak of Peter cutting off the ear of a slave named Malchus, John being the only one to name the victim, and it is only Luke, the physician gospel writer, who records of Jesus healing the ear, this serving as the final miracle performed by Christ before his crucifixion. Jesus realizes this bloodshed could lead to fighting. His restoration of the ear is used to disarm the anger of the soldiers and to fulfill his statement that none of his apostles would die while he was living, a fact of which he had spoken during his earlier prayer. The Jewish portion of his trial is recorded here, carried out in quickness so to get him before the Roman governor Pilate as expeditiously as possible to have crucified before Passover. Watching the events of this mock trial is Peter, all of the apostles having fled in terror once the arrest began. Peter makes his way to the temple with John to see what was happening, remaining anonymous, not wanting to be associated with Christ. The fact is, on three occasions, he is identified as one who was part of the following of Christ, the third time drawing him the closest. The first two simply ask if he wasn't a disciple of Christ, and he says no. But the third time is an eyewitness who recognized Peter as one from the arrest in the garden, and Peter still denies his knowing of Christ, at which time the cock crows, fulfilling the words of Jesus. As with the cutting off of the ear, the betrayal uh, by Peter is recorded in all four Gospels, but it is Luke again who records a fact not found in the other accounts. At the moment the rooster crows, Jesus, though surrounded by screaming accusers, turns and looks at Peter directly in the eye. How Christ was able to hear a rooster crowing is one thing, but even more so, how he knew exactly where, Jesus, where Peter stood is a miracle of itself. With that eye contact, the memory floods back to the apostle of Christ, telling him that this would occur, and Peter flees from the place, weeping bitter tears of sorrow and shame. Very likely you have been in a place of denying Christ. Likely it wasn't one which was for your physical protection from harm, but more so for your physical pleasure and not wanting to be seen as overly religious. You didn't want to be considered a Jesus freak, so to be excluded from the to be so to be excluded from the group, you wanted to continue to have fun just as they were. This is attitude is one that betrays Jesus. The greater concern for self, acting as if he is not Lord, that you don't fall down, as did the soldiers before him. A point needs to come when you spiritually lock eyes with him, realizing yourself within yourself that he has been aware of your times of denying him, just as he was of Peter's. There is nothing about our life that is a secret. There are no acceptable sins, but there is forgiveness. 
Forgiveness that follows repentance, repentance that is the turning away from sin. We know that Peter did repent and God used him in mighty ways afterwards, just as he wishes to do us who repent. Thanks for being here today. Now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live our utmost for his highest. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.